Welcome to Lock and Load Podcast. My name is Josh. And I'm Michelle. And we are here to talk to you today about um, the assault weapon registration uh, for the 2023 Connecticut Others. Um, the form is called a 414-C. Um, so first, let's start off where we can find this form. Go to the state police website and under that special licensing and firearms. It's a very long address. We can put it in our link tree. Um, and then when you go down about um, for the fourth paragraph down, fourth section down, um, it, the search form is right there. Um, it's going to be a PDF download. Um, now, if your form has the notary seal option on that, that is the incorrect form. That is the old form. The new one does not need to be notarized. Who made that decision? I have no idea. They might have found that notary doing it was causing more problems, more time. I, I don't know. It seems well, like they considering just made... we're uploading these electronically, maybe that too, because like you don't, <clears throat> how, how can you upload an imprint? It's like almost though all of this whole registration process they made easier than they did back in 2013. We have more technology. I also think that they wanted more compliance. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see the numbers at the end of the day and the compliance. Yes. Um, so if you don't know what the form looks like, you can look on Josh's screen right now. It looks something similar to this, guys. Um, on that, it's going to ask for your thumbprint. So that's the question I get the most, actually. Um, how do we do this? It is simple. Go to Staples, Walmart, Target, wherever, wherever you can get an ink pad. Get an ink pad. Get your thumb. Make sure your thumb is clean. Stamp the ink pad. Stamp the piece of paper. Not rolling, just a nice press so your, your nice little thumbprint shows up there. And that has to be done in two boxes. Mm -hmm. This form is cut into what I'll say is two-thirds on the top and a third on the bottom. It has to be in both of those boxes. Um, to our understanding, you will be getting the bottom third back. Um, so make sure you fill all this information out appropriately and um, accurately. Accurately, we're going to throw that over to Michelle. Okay. So... When you look at the form, it says it has a blank line after certificate number. We don't do anything with that as the owner of the firearm. That is going to be done at, at SLFU. And that's on both pieces because you're going to need it on your piece and they keep it on their piece. And that's how they record it, you know, put the records together. So you will not be entering a number in the certificate number. Correct. That is for the state to do. Correct. And then like when you fill out a DP3 if it's not electronically done yet, or you fill out your um, 4473 through the um, any of your paperwork when you buy a gun, 67. Um, you have to make sure that you fill this out correctly and the way that they're asking. So on the first box at the very top, and it's in the bottom section, but it want the first box says applicant's name. They want your last name, your first name, and your middle name. If your you don't have a middle name, N. M N Nancy, Mary, Nancy, for no, for no middle, middle name. name. And they're not asking for an initial. So full words, it's your full name. Even if you don't use it, full even, legal. Correct. Name. Even if it's not on your permit, if it's not on your driver's license, I hear that all the time. Well, I don't use it. It's not on my record. These are legal documents. So you have to, if it's on your birth certificate, it has to go on the paperwork. Okay. The second box is your pistol permit or your eligibility number. All right. So that's where you would put your pistol permit number. And that is the black number on the top of your pistol permit in the box. Top left. Yes. Then you're going to put your address. No PO boxes. Correct. So full address is written out. And that is your number, your street, your town, your state, and your zip code. So everything has to be written out. CT is okay for an abbreviation as far the as the state, state goes. Correct. But everything else must be written out full. So say it's Waterbury. It can't be W-T-B-Y. It has to be written out the full word. Okay. Um, date of birth. It does not say here, but as a suggestion, and I tell everyone. The 224 method. Correct. So 0407 <clears throat> 1993. Only because that way there's no way anything can happen where it can be 
adjusted or shifted on yeah. you. If you write all that out, there's no way it can be messed around with after the fact. Um, this, they do ask for your social security number. They do not say it's optional on here. So according to this form, you have to put your social security number on there. Okay. And then they want your home telephone number. Most of us don't have a home telephone number. So I would assume we would just put our cell number in there. Um, that was, that's new. They've never asked for that as far as I know. Yeah. Um, sex, you're going to write out male or female. That's all that the state recognizes. Okay. You're going to write um, your height and that could be in numbers. So, so six and do the little tick mark and then five and two tick marks. Correct. Or for your short people, I know those are lower numbers. It's okay. Six, five. That's a big one. Technically six, four and a half. I like to round up though. <laughs> okay. Then your weight and then I round down. Um. <laughs> so say 150 pounds LBS. Yes. Don't give them an excuse to mess this up or deny it, guys. And then your operator license number, which is your driver's license Correct. number. Correct. That is your driver's license. All right. They're not asking for where. They just want the number. Yep. So you just have to put the number in there. Then the next line is where it gets a little bit more funky for mm -hmm. people. Okay. The first box is the manufacturer. So you're going to look at your firearm. And you're going to see what the manufacturer is. You can look at your DP3s. However, your DP3s will not have the importer if it's an imported gun. So make sure you also check your firearm as you do this form. So if you have lowers, um, specifically arrow. Now, we sold a lot of arrows. I know a lot of stores did. Arrow precision is written <clears throat> right here. Look at the spelling. It's not spelled weird or anything. Mm -hmm. but It is written right there. Um, what I would do or what I'm going to do is write error precision comma USA because that is the manufacturer. That's how it's done on the fed form. It's how it should be done in your state forms. Um, now arrow is not an importer. They don't import anything. Um, so if you don't know, let's give you an example of an importer. Um, Springfield is a great one. Any other striker fire handguns. So like the Hellcat or the Hellcat pro, those are actually made by HS products it's spelled weird in croatia mm -hmm. that is the manufacturer but the importer is springfield armory usa now i understand those are not others those are not ars i get that i'm just giving you an example so i would assume most of these guns probably not imported but there are exceptions like um the cz scorpions okay a lot of people bought the scorpions or you also had Strybogs that were bought, um, quite a few of those. I think some H and Ks towards the end of the ban were starting to be sold. So I'll use CZ for example. Yeah, your H and P5s. Right. So your CZs, all right, are are made in Czech. Okay. So it, your manufacturer is going to be CZ Czech. The importer is CZ USA. Those are two separate companies. And there's two boxes on this form. They want to know manufacturer and they want to know the importer. You have to look at your gun to look and see. Because along with that, earlier on when you were buying others, the person who remanufactured these into an other had, if they manufactured, because they had a manufacturing FFL license. This is a completed firearm, not a strip <clears throat> lower you bought. Correct. These are all others, Connecticut others that people were buying. OK, it may also have the name of the company, whether it be Jojo's, you know, any of these stores that remanufactured these. Um, you'll have to add that also into the importer because that was it. So it'd be CZ USA slash whoever the other one. If it does not say it on do the lower, you do not put it. OK, so it's only it is what's on the gun. That is the most important thing I can stress. It has to be what's on the gun. It's not hard. You just look. All right. And then if it's imported, you're going to have CZ and you're going to see CZ all over it. But then you're going to see another thing that says CZ USA. Now, you know, it was made in Czech and it was imported in the U.S. So side note on that with pre-bans, because this is also for pre-bans. Correct. Every pre-ban is now an assault weapon. So if Michelle will hold up my nice little coat. Um, AR-15, Sporter, whatever the model it was. Um, 
that I now have to go and register to. Now, it's not another, but it's an assault rifle, right? According to the state of Connecticut, even though it was a pre-ban. So all pre-ban rifles now must be registered with the mm-hmm. state too. Now, Colt made in Hartford, right? We have no importers. Correct. There's other ARs out there that were probably considered pre-bans that might have importers. Um, now, if there is no importer mark, right? Somebody maybe brought that back, didn't mm-hmm. go through the proper channels, still a legal gun. That happens a lot on older guns, right? Um, especially None World War II stuff. era, but nothing that I can think of off the top of my head. They all should have an importer and a manufacturer. So um, like this one says, and you'll see it, it's right on the lower area. And it says Colt Manufacturing Company, Inc. That is the manufacturer, all of that. Okay. Yep. And then it says Hartford, Connecticut, which shows where it was manufactured. And USA is fine for that. Correct. You can just put, yeah, USA. You don't necessarily have to. <clears throat> um, I like to. And again, it's from my paperwork aspect. I'm um, doing federal forms and all that wonderful documentation. So it keeps it clean. Yeah. At the end of the day. So that's what you're looking at for that stuff. And you're going, you don't have to look at the barrel. You're looking at your receiver part of your firearm. Yeah, so nowhere on this form does it ask for barrel length at all. Um, it doesn't ask you whether it's a pistol grip firearm or a receiver. Nope. Um, which is interesting. Um, it just asks for your manufacturer imported. The next part, your serial number. I think that should be pretty simple for people to find on there. Yeah, they don't um, hide them on, on no. others very well, no, so it, you're good. Um, model. So on there somewhere, it's going to have your model. Um, you know, if we're going back to Arrow here, a lot of you bought those. Um, your AR-15 ones are going to be your M4E ones or your X-15, but there are special models out there like the Freedom line, the um, Texas ones. They're all different model numbers. Sharps does that Betsy too. does that. Yeah. Uh, there are Betsy was one. Um, so right here near typically the caliber area, it's going to tell you your model number under that. It's going to say your caliber. Mm -hmm. Now, again, most stripped lowers, not all probably. Um, I don't know any of the local stores that, you know, forge their own. They might've put five, five, six on them, whatever. Um, if it says multi-caliber, um, what you can do is put down caliber of zero. If it's a strip lower. If it's a strip lower and not assembled. Correct. And and to that to that note, all strip lowers are multi-cal. No matter correct. whether it's stamped with a caliber or not. If you have a strip lower in front of you and it is not built into a gun, it is multi. Once you build it, if you're looking they at will it, come. Sorry, I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> Once you build it and you're looking at it, your your receiver may say multi. That's when you have to look at your barrel, or you know, or you'll know what you have to put the caliber down because the caliber Sorry, does matter closer. if it's built. So, this is my completed 300 blackout arrow precision, um, 12.1 inch barrel, pin and welded. Um, I built this. Well, right? on your optic, it says 300 in case you forget. It does. <laughs> EO tech. So this is a complete rifle. If I'm doing this paperwork, right, make or um, manufacturer is going to be Aero Precision USA. Model is going to be M4E1. Um, and then caliber is going to be 300. Um, AAC is 300 blackout. Um, and, and that's what the I would caliber on your receiver on that. If you were looking at your yeah, receiver, does what does say that multi. say? It does say multi though. So it is um, 300, even though it says multi. it is a completed firearm. Mm-hmm. Um, so my nice, very fun Connecticut other. Um, yeah. So it does not ask for barrel length, but it is going to ask you for a caliber. So that's how I think they're going to differentiate whether you have a lower or you have a full built firearm. Um, and now I'm going to say this off the record, <clears throat> publicly on the record. I was like, wait a minute. If you were sold a lower and you did not complete your firearm, um, th- there's no way for them to know if you completed your firearm or not. Um, so like, I, right, strip lower. Right? I, I have plans for this one. I have a, a few other ones in my mm-hmm. safe. Um, I grabbed them before the, the mess because I wanted to build some things that were short. I like um, the green. Yeah, this one's going to be my 762 by 39, I think. Oh, nice. Yeah, my other one's going to be a 458 SOCOM. That one's a, a thick boy. <laughs> um, 
I've wanted to do a 7639 build for like months or actually probably over a year now. Just and I have the parts. Oh geez. I'm just lazy. <laughs> I have other things to do. Like podcasts. Yes. Um, so like because this is not completed, it's gonna be zero or multi. If you want to write multi, it's fine. Um, zero is what gets written on the DPS three forms because we can't write the word multi. So it's a zero caliber. That's what that translates to. So I'm going off like the information that I write down or I use mm -hmm. and I, or used to use on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Now, and then um, you're going to sign in date in the bottom and then copy all of that information on that bottom third too. And the benefit, if it's not built, so is... You can build it into anything federally compliant. You can go back to episode whatever it was right. with that picture in the middle and look at those options. Or you may be able to build it into several calibers along the yeah. way because now your Different lower numbers. is registered. Yep. Um, now, I get this question a lot. I don't understand the question, to be honest, but I answer it. What if I don't want to register my gun? Well, you are an adult. Um, you are able to make your own decisions. There are legal consequences of that. If caught. If caught. Um, let me go with the if part on that. The state knows what you bought. Yes. You fill out a form called a DPS3C form that gets submitted to the state police. They know. Now, again, is there a way to prove that you didn't sell it out of state? I get that asked that question. No, there's not. Um, if you don't want to do this, but you want to be compliant still, um, I've had people come in and buy the fixed mag adapters. Okay. I personally think it's kind of dumb. Um, because I if you bought this before, what is it? June is June, it June 6th? It, they say June 7th, but okay. if it's before June 6th, cause that's well, when he signed it. Right. This is your <clears throat> little golden ticket now. Yep. Right. I can't sell this to anyone. Uh, I mean, I could, and they can build it into a fixed mag, but like, I don't have to, as long as I do my paperwork, I can build this into anything federally compliant. If you want to go and build a fixed mag, cool. Come in, buy a lower, buy the kit, do it yourself right now. Um, don't, don't kill one of the lowers you already have in my opinion, but if you want to, you're more than welcome to. Um, other compliance are Cali keys, and there's another magazine that's questionable. What's a Cali key? Cali keys, is, it makes it into a single shot. Um, the bolt and the charging handle are pieced together, and it kills the entire gas system. So does it make it like a bolt action? Yeah. Okay, so that's the bolt action yeah, version. Okay. Correct. Okay. Um, and then there's one, I have to look up what the mag is called. Um, one store says this is legal, talking to their attorney. I don't know how I feel about it yet. Um, basically, when you open up the um, receiver on the upper and lower, you can drop this magazine in from the top, load it with 10 rounds, close it, it fire, right? You fire the 10 rounds off and it pops up the rear pin at the end. It's just different things you have to do to it. Um, and that breaks open what they call the action. So then it's not um, a semi-automatic detachable magazine. Now, is it though? That's still sounds there's like an argument back and forth here. I don't agree with that. Um, I guess people without naming names, people from the SLFU have said, well, if it takes you less than 30 seconds to change the magazine, then it's detachable. And realistically, if it pops that pin open, it breaks open like this. I can take it out and drop a new one in. Mm -hmm. That seems detachable to me i just find it interesting they're using a time frame that calls detachable. Yeah. detachable well that was detachable. what was verbally said there i don't think there's anything in writing about <clears throat> that yet there might be an email between that store and this um but nothing i've seen officially um again people are trying to find compliant options here um we were working on some it, it kind of fizzled out or it died it died um we finally got the email back unfortunately we're at a point now where compliant you know there the old concept of an ar-15 in connecticut not you know freedom, freedom is freedom you free states allow you to do this yeah. um but in connecticut the i the concept of a semi-automatic with a, a oh, magazine, detachable magazine right is is gone that looks like an ar-15 is dead correct you um, have fight light scrs those take detachable magazines 
um, your M1As, your Mini 14s. There's a lot of options yeah. we can still have PC9 here. Carbines. But what people think of AR is no Fixed longer. Yep. So your options are register so you can make it into something that you wanted to that actually has been illegal for the last 10 years. Um, or you put a fit, you know, buy one or fix the mag, you know, and then you also have those that are looking at this and going, I'm not going to comply, period. Nope. Just not going to do it. Now, we all know in 2013, the compliance level was extremely low. Um, I wonder what the numbers actually were. It was like, I think it wasn't over 15% last oh. I had heard. I don't know if those numbers changed. Um you know, it's one of those things, and I tell people all the time, because they ask me, well, what, you know, what do you think? I think this is a personal choice. You have to know, as, as Josh said, the, the consequence to this is a felony. If you are in state possession, level, yes. correct, a state level, which that will then travel all over the country if you are charged and convicted yeah. of a felony. It, you just don't go to federal prison. Correct. So it's not an ATF charge. It's a state of Connecticut. It still Collin lose charge. your second amendment rights. charge. Yeah, correct. Um, so the, the deal is, you know, I didn't know I had to register. Isn't it's going to work an excuse, guys for gun owners. Negligence is not an option. No. You know, if you want to stand your ground and say, absolutely not. This is ridiculous. I bought it legally. We're not a stand your ground state. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, if and that's on you to decide. I am not going to tell anybody you have to do this. But anybody who wants to do this, we're just trying to help you navigate through, because of all the questions we've been getting, navigate through the process. Um, you know, choices are for people. It's, you know, where do you stand and how does it make sense for you? Um, and that's... That's all I can say. I'm not going to endorse one side or another. I have my opinions. Josh has his. Joe Schmo has his. We all need to do what we need to do, but we can't. If you're going to decide to not comply, please at least be educated and understand the risk you take. It's not about the cops knocking in your doors. You know, we've talked about this before. It it can happen as innocently as, you know, a medical emergency and an officer arrives every time EMS shows up, they come into your house, you have an AR in your house and they know whether you have guns and they're going to look and then they're going to, hmm, cause you've now allowed them in the house. And the last thing most people are going to do is go, Oh, the cop can't come in. My, you know, my wife is on the ground having a heart attack, but that cop can't come in my house. They're not going to do that. So keep all that in mind. Um, it's, you know, the way they did this registration, to be totally honest, is much more fair on a gun owner side than it was in 2013. Yeah, it makes it easier. And again, so um, I think the last thing we didn't cover on this is you can either mail these in, which they actually verbally say on the website they do not prefer. Um, you can do it on the online system. They'd rather that, yes. So, But there's more. We, okay. didn't, we didn't do the unique IDs and markings. Oh, uh, okay. So... Yeah. That's a little let's, confusing to some people. Let's recap from the top here. Okay. So um, on the state police website, um, you're going to go and find a form called a 414C. You're going to fill out all the information with full words, including middle name, including legal names, your pistol permit number, your street address, nothing abbreviated, your date of birth, your social security number, your um, cell phone number, your sex, your height, your weight, Operator license number is going to be your driver's license, manufacturer, importer, if applicable, um, serial number, model, caliber, and the last one is going to be your new unique IDs or markings. And those are literally not necessarily what color it is. Um, if it has like some of the sharps had engravings on them with unicorns and, you know, uh, don't tread on me. That's not necessarily what they're talking about. It's if something has been altered on the gun to make it unique. Okay. Which are very few and far between. Yeah. Um, and then you sign it Well, you thumbprint it and then you sign it and then you do the same date. thing on and date it. And you do it on the bottom section, too. It's worded a little different on the bottom. Instead yeah. of saying applicant, it says owner's name, which would be you. Um, yeah, it says owner. That's weird. 
Right. And I think everything else, and it's got a little less well, information. Well, actually, it makes sense because the top part is your application and the bottom part is your stamp of approval. That's true. That's so your now shirt. You own yep. it. Yep. And then you sign that also with your thumbprint. And like Josh said, you scan it. The best way is to scan it and send it back up to SLFU. Electronically. If you do not, and that's via email. If you do not, not have. via email, it's through the new online system. Oh. There's a separate portal for it, just like you would change your address. It's actually on that portal. It is going to show you every gun registered to you ever. Ever. Well, it actually also gives you a place under guns that you would never do assault weapons for, like a regular handgun. So don't get confused by that either. I've had some people go, yeah. why does it say I can do a, an assault weapon on this? You can't. It's just the way that they yeah, the system did the up. system. Lowest bidder. Yes. That's how our background check system was done. Lowest bidder out of California. That it No, was Washington. I thought it was California. It's right. Washington State. Was it, it wasn't originally designed for a medical thing, wasn't it? Correct. Though? Yeah. Back okay. in the 90s. <laughs> yep. And we're recoding. So every time we recode code, we break three things. So I don't know if anybody here watching has noticed the state system goes down a lot. Well, that would be because of the system we bought most of the time. Not all the time, but most of the time. And then they have to wait for somebody out on the West Coast to fix it because yeah. they're in a different time zone. Great system. All right. If you guys have questions, comment. Yes. Send me a message. I don't want to be mean, but like I get a lot of questions in the store, guys. I don't need more. Um, I will answer your questions to the best of my ability, but like send us a message on Facebook or Instagram first, well, especially if it's a quick, easy question. Pictures help and try to do it on your own like get familiar don't just go you know okay i've listened to the podcast cast cast bleh. <laughs> try that again podcast <laughs> i've listened to the podcast and now i have questions go check the website out check the form out see if you can answer it because a lot of it to be totally honest this is fairly straightforward um you know if you can't electronically send it in talk to a friend somebody else might have a scanner and be able to do it for you um, I know I've, I've done it for a few people because I, I have the ability to do so. Um, so, you know, you can always do that and just check before you answer, before you ask us the questions, you, you may be able to figure it out on your own. And if you can't, we're happy to help you. Yeah. Um, so in our link tree, um, we, which is L I N K T R dot E E forward slash L N L podcast. Um, we will put down the SLFU's direct link to where you can find the form. Now it's going to go to their website, but it's going to be the fourth one down. I'll write that in a little comment when you click on the little button. And you have to set up an account in order to do this, do. guys. You cannot just go and download the form. You have to set up your own account yep. now. Um, it should be the same. If you've already set up an account to change your address in the past, like I have, it should be the same thing. Um, but you probably have to have uh, set up your own account have your driver's license number, I believe, and your pistol permit on you to do that. Cause I think it does ask for both of those in, uh, pieces and an of email. information in an email. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that is it guys. Um, are we missing anything on there? Yeah. I don't think so. Right. These have to be in. Um, that's an argument. I've heard three the different days yeah i've heard the beginning of may i heard may first on their website it does say registration will need to be completed by may uh 5 1 2024 so may 1st i'm going to tell you guys you do want if this is the path you're going to take don't wait till the last minute because just because you've submitted it does not mean you have your certificate so if it's by may 1st and you submit it the last day of april you now have to wait however long it's going right. to take for them to get you that certificate back before that gun is technically an legal. assault weapon. Yeah. Right. So I'll be doing mine in the next week or so. I'm, I didn't get mine done beforehand. I have a couple I'm going to do because I want to put some stocks on my elders. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I'm but, making things in a pistols too, especially if this brace band gets overturned. Oh, mm. yeah. And it's looking like it too. Yeah, I know. It's going to be nice. Yep. Nope. So the sooner the better, because this is not something that you're going to submit and then get an answer within 24 hours. You got to realize no. these guys 
it, it takes pistol Slow permit. Slow fast. Pistol permit renewals now are up to three months behind. Are they? Yes. So now we're just adding more work into that department because God forbid Connecticut passed more laws and then make sure that they had the people in that department to actually do it. Yeah, okay. No, no, they just put more work on the people. And, and then. So to be fair, most of the people that work there are nice. Yes. I said most. We've had some unpleasant interactions. Um, just getting normal background checks done in the past, um, I'll just say generically, four weeks um, with some rude people. So, again, most of the people are there are nice. They're there to do the job. Um, they're overworked. I'm not, I'm not making a that. ton of excuses for them. There's some that there's no excuse. There's yeah. others that are there's having been, a bad day, as we all do. That happens. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. Be nice. It, it is. You and know, if you're from the SLF, if you've been watching this, be nice. Thank you very much for giving me numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't call that often anymore. I don't really either. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I called the other day and I was like, this is weird. Because like I do a lot of like, even when I go and get authorization, numbers, it's through the electronic system. So like I call for a TD, but like the per there was a system weird error where the permit and the no name didn't match up but it did right right it was weird weird little glitch might all right have, anyways yeah might have been other kinds of questions that i've been asking that i've been having to get through to people so it's it's not even authorization numbers but they've yeah. they've been doing you know they there's a few they in do there what they that, can. yes and there's a few i can count on more than others yeah so um this is sponsored by both of us Yay. Um, these episodes and productions and whatever you want to call them are done with both of our time guys. Um, so like support us, um, Michelle owns Patriot wear holsters, um, in our link tree, there is a code for 10% off guys. Yes. I didn't tell you that though. <laughs> um, and then I unlock and load and we do pistol permit classes, which have been selling out nicely lately. Um, and obviously gun sales. Um, and you're giving off percentage or no, I don't know. Maybe ask, <laughs> no, there's nothing in our link tree about that. Um, I just like business guys. Uh, we are the number one rated gun store in Connecticut on Google guys. So, and we've had that for a while and nobody's coming close to my Google reviews. Um, Josh's Josh's store is a good yeah. little store. I like yeah, it. It's there is a little of a lot. It's a little big store, if that makes yeah. any sense. It, I have a ton of variety guys jammed into every inch of this place. Um, when I need so. something fit and finish, and I can't find the firearm, yeah, I, I can call Josh, it. and Josh usually helps me out. Yeah. He's he's good. I got a lot of variety here, yeah. and and new stuff all the time. Canic just came out with a new. Um, it's an SF. It's called the Apocalypse. It look really nice. I just got two ordered today. But does it? Is it the same size yeah, as a regular yeah, SF? Yeah. Okay. It's just one of those, um, another signature series that came out, but it looked really cool. I actually I might keep one. I'm going to have to look at them before yeah, I leave. Yeah. Okay. So, All right. um, other than that, guys, um, have a, have a great day guys. Yeah. And, uh, we'll see you next time. My name is Josh and I'm Michelle and good night. Bye guys.